the biggest killer isn't always money being broke biggest killer in this world is loneliness it's a lot of science on this and loneliness is on the rise so i'm traveling the world and let me give you the simplest best life hack to make friends all around the world no matter where you go and do it fast and you make the right vibe of friends right your social circle you build a global social circle so here's what i do i'm i'm in europe right now and you know it's intimidating to make new friends uh, my best friend just died you know it has me thinking a lot about friendships and how they're hard to make quote unquote but that's a real limiting belief um an amish guy once told me you know new friends are good but old friends are better and there's truth to that right but you need new friends because sometimes old friends are moving on or like i said my best friend died and um sadly but here's the hack because you, you got two parameters two constraints you want to make new friends you don't want it to be shallow global is great because you get all this like diverse kind of uh, mindset and you get all this eclectic would be the right word i hate the word diverse now it's such a buzzword but here's what i do anyone you meet so here's the hack you make a little small talk and you say yeah well, i'm doing jujitsu class i found a good teacher you want to go with me or i'm doing a muay thai class or i'm doing going to the gym you can use the gym gym's not quite as novel remember humans have these 25 cognitive biases that that attract their the human brain's attention so humans have this reward system and novelty is huge. So when you say Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu or you say Muay Thai or you say even boxing, like not that many people do that. Now, if you're not into those sports, you can swap it out with whatever kayaking. I just like like boxing, Jiu-Jitsu because there's usually group classes. It's not that expensive to bring people and it's super novel. Um, but again, you can adjust this a little bit, but try this way. And like, here's the thing. It's a, there's this concept of self-selecting groups and adverse selection, right? People who say no to that, either they're busy, which is fine, but if they're not in that mindset of self-development, you know, self-actualization, then good riddance if they say no. But you'll find people will be like, ah, I'll try that. And then you go into like a group class or I yesterday did one with like four or five people. Um, from all around Europe that I just have met in different places and, and we did a boxing class and it's crazy it actually builds camaraderie faster there's this science that when humans do hard things together I don't know if you ever heard of this like best place you can take someone on a date is like a roller coaster because they say this rush of dopamine when you're next to it it's like an anchoring so they start associating you with this rush so like even a horror movie works because even though it's a negative rush, right? Cortisol, all this stuff, it still anchors to you as kind of like, oh, whenever I'm around this person, it's emotion inducing. So that's why I like to do a tough class. Like jujitsu, people are going to feel uncomfortable. Most people, I mean, I've done it for many years, but the average person never even thought of it, but it's in their consciousness. Like the average person in the world wants to be more fit. Okay. And like I said, you can do the gym. I just find the gym to not be so novel. So it's like, oh, I'll come to the gym with me. Half the world, especially if you're in Europe, is already going to the gym. Maybe in America where not many people are in shape, you can say, you know, the gym. But this starts to build a social circle, shared activity in something that's a little bit tough that gives that emotional, that psychological rush that they then anchor on you as like, oh, whenever I'm around this person, I, ha I like my emotions change. Remember, <laughs> no matter what you think, Humans are a uh, emotional being, by the way. Anybody who tells you, whichever your friends tell you they're highly logical is probably your most emotional friend. There's a good book on this called Descartes' Error, by the way, on a side note, saying you, it's not even possible for the human brain to function without emotion. So you, we're not able to be Spock from Star Trek or robotic as much as we try. It would actually, in that book, it's a scientific book, Descartes' Error, talks about how basically brain function was shut down so when you're traveling the world making friends the reason this hack works is because one it's that self-selecting group and the people who say no is kind of the adverse selection you don't even want right they're not on that maslow hierarchy of needs trying to get to the top of self-actualization by trying new things right so you're going to get a person who's a little bit of a risk taker right you don't want friends that are totally risk averse i mean you want some 
But, you know, Homo sapiens, our ancestors, the ones who survived and evolved, had a little bit lower risk aversion. They were able to move before the storm or before the ice age hit, you know? The migration of humans across the globe shows that those who are a little bit open, they call it in the hexaco, which is kind of the best personality uh, test in the world, better than 16 personalities or Myers-Briggs, these 25 facets of human behavior, one of them is openness to new experience. So, <clears throat> and, and intelligence has been linked to openness to new experience. So by bringing up stuff, like you want to go to jujitsu or Muay Thai, like since most people haven't done it, it's kind of subconsciously, or I shouldn't say subconscious, you're inadvertently selecting people who are willing to take a little bit of risk and it's not much. So if that freaks them out on the risk barrier, you probably don't want them in your social circle. You're going to need friends that are a little bit <clears throat> open to some new ideas. So anyway, I hope this hope it helps you. You know, one thing I like about Scandinavia, Scandinavia, um, if you Google the least lonely people in the world, it's like Denmark, Sweden, you know, and the reason being, I mean, partly is it's a complex reason. If you're an anthropologist and you study Viking culture, even though we know Vikings as, you know, berserkers and this kind of aggressive plundering group, but really they were very, um, could almost say communal. So if you go to a Scandinavian school, they foster this group mentality. So I think the average Danish or Swedish person has like 12 friends. The average American has like two uh, adult I'm talking about. Like people just like lose their friends. So you have to work against this because as I said at the beginning of the video, all the money in the world doesn't matter if you don't have anyone to enjoy it with. Money best spent. I look back and I've spent money on different things. I'm kind of a mad scientist with life, but like the expenses that I don't regret, even if they were kind of extravagant, are the ones like flying in my friends, you know, going on a global trip. So grow your social circle. Oh yeah, the average Danish person I think has 12 friends and average American has like two adult, like actual close friends. You see it, you go out in Scandinavia, people are at big tables with friends for just like hours. They're not just like at a restaurant on their phone, getting a quick meal with maybe a buddy. They're like enjoying life. So all money in the world doesn't matter if you don't have anybody to enjoy it with. That's their science to that. Like the actual marginal utility of wealth you can graph it with, if you're in a bubble, you know, imagine you're on Mars uh, alone and you're the richest person. You have all this material stuff. The uh, famous billionaire, the Greek billionaire, what was his name? So I forget, he married uh, JFK's widow. He said, um, all the money in the world wouldn't matter if there wasn't women. So I mean, that's one take on the social thing, but I mean, friends. So use this hack make friends, build your social circle. You should have at least 12 people in your phone that you talk to on a daily or weekly basis, unrelated to business or stuff, just friends. And not all of them shouldn't be family either. Family is good, but you, you know, sometimes there's a friend that's closer than a brother. That's a famous saying, you know, there's sometimes there's a friend that's closer than a brother. Friendships, if you study like Dr. David Buss, his evolutionary psychology, families and friends, have other social dynamics that sometimes make make them in conflict, you know? Leave a comment below, contribute to the conversation. What's a hack to make friends anywhere you go that I forgot about? Contribute. Tell me what you agree or what you don't agree. What's something better than jujitsu? What's something better than kickboxing? By the way, I highly recommend you jump in my new 67 Steps. I made a new version of 67 Steps. It's one of the most widely purchased um, self-development programs in history. I launched it in 2014, but I got a new version that has the four pillars, health, wealth, love, happiness, 67 videos, go through, do a 67 day challenge to transform your life. Dude, I've had hundreds of thousands of people go through the program. It's insane. So, and all this stuff that I'm talking about, and I got lots of stuff that's even more in depth than what I'm talking about here. I'll see you in the 67 steps. Go here, go to tylopez.com slash 67 steps podcast just the number six seven steps with a s steps podcast it'll redirect you to where you should go tylopez.com 67 steps podcast it'll take you 
right? Get in the program. Try a 67 day challenge to transform your life. I got stuff about health, wealth, love, happiness, all of these kind of way more in depth than I'm doing here. I mean, a free podcast. I wanted to put this out there because I like giving stuff away free, but for people, it's not expensive either. So go through it, commit, try something, man. Life's short. I told you my best friend died. <laughs> At the end of your life, you'll look back and go, what if? But if you go on that path of self-actualization, you can, I mean, the biggest pain is regret, man. You know, emotional pain, you have all kinds of stuff and breakups and this. But at the end of the day, regret can't be reversed. That's the problem. It's a good book on this now by Daniel Pink on the power of regret. So avoid regret to the extent that you can. So go to, I'll put a link here, or if you're listening, tylopez.com slash 67 steps podcast, 67 steps podcast. So the new version of my 67 steps. If you're one of the whatever 50 or 100,000 people who went through the paid 67 steps, this is updated, you know, seven, eight years later with much more powerful stuff. I still have the old stuff there too, but um, yeah, 